Hi everybody, my name is James Davies and this is a discussion of some photographs that I've taken recently. These were taken with a Pentax SBO AF Zoom compact camera, which I got in a charity shop uh, last year. I was shooting expired Kodak Portra 100T film. The T stands for tungsten, which means that the colours in it were originally balanced for using a tungsten electric light. Um, as you can see from this picture, taken on Lambeth Bridge, I took this outside in natural daylight. And it's a feature of all of the photographs, all of the three photographs I'm showing you at the moment, that they have this cast that's imparted by the chemistry in the film. This is a pretty good example of the type of pictures that I like to take. It's great when you have perfect film, which is balanced for the conditions in which you, you're trying to take photographs. But I find I like experimenting with films that might be a little bit weird. When a film is expired, you get a roll of the dice, as it were, with the colour values in colour film. And you also, obviously, if the colour balance is meant for tungsten, it's going to look strange outside. But that's okay by me. This is how I take photographs, and it's part of the expression that I like in taking the pictures. So this was on a day out in London uh, in November 2016. And my friends and I were down by Lambeth Bridge. And this seemed like a good photo opportunity at the time, I think. I was interested in the perspective that the bridge gives of the landscape. You get the traffic markings and the side of the bridge is leading you towards a very interesting, obvious centre point. You've got traffic on one side, you've got a river on the other side and a few people. It's a real no-brainer for me for an interesting, not only record of a day out, but a record of activity in a big city and a sensation of showing one part of the world to the rest of the world. Because when I'm putting my pictures on the internet, and I use Flickr, I know that the audience there is international, and they will be interested in seeing London. They'll be as interested in seeing London as I am in seeing any other city or place in the world. So the second photograph, I think, is almost certainly taken from possibly the other side of the road or a little bit further along when we were walking down this part of the river. This is uh, a technique I love with film, which is pointing the camera right at the, the, uh, the brightness of the sky because you, uh, you can't fry the film in the way that you might damage a digital camera if you pointed it directly at the sun. The sun is a super bright thing. It's really strong. And who knows what it might do to a, a delicate chip. But with film, you just let it burn into those chemicals and it captures all of the photons exactly in the way it's going to do. So again, this is always a roll of the dice. The, uh, the camera is going to decide, wow, I think I'm shooting this film. You know, the camera setup. I should point that out, in fact. So the, the Pentax SBO is a compact camera, which means that it, it doesn't have a lot of complicated controls. You can actually do quite a few things through the menu, but on the whole, things like setting the film speed is done by the camera using the DX code on the canister. So it's 100 ASA film, and the camera just thinks, great, it's 100 ASA film. So it decides on the exposure and the shutter speed and all of the normal features of the camera based on that. And if I point it directly at the sun, it's going to squeeze all of those up right up to the maximum so that it lets in as much as it can before it just can't compute it any longer. Which is always a fun thing. It's a good way of, of um, trying out an expired film. On the whole, expired films benefit from a little bit more light than a regular film. Uh, they tend to come out a little bit dark. And what we got here, I really like it as a um, as an image of, of London. I don't live in London. I visit it a lot and I have visited a lot over the years. And there's always this sense of an awesome city. And I mean awesome in both the sense of it being, wow, that's awesome, man. That's a good thing. But also it's a great big place. When you look, no matter how far you look, it just keeps going on. And sometimes it's it's quite awesome in terms of its size. One is left with a sense of awe. And when you're viewing the city with the river nearby, it's got this this mixture of the urban environment, but also the natural features of, of water and sky. These come together quite nicely, I think, in this picture. And this cast that's given by the film, this sort of smoky cast, I think is down to the tungsten balance of the chemistry involved. With this overloading of light, of course, the, the sun is partially blocked by the shadows, so there's lots of nice bleeding through coming in there. But I just like seeing that sort of waveform that the horizon created by the buildings gives. You've got the tall skyscraper. In the background, in the distance, what I'm really visually focusing on was the building that's being built. 
which is over towards the right hand side because we're looking at the moment at the inside of that building soon it will be covered in its materials that they decide to build a building out of and all of that that is currently outside will be inside and one day people will be walking around in there and they won't they might be but you never really get the sense that that inside was once outside and the final picture today uh, was taken again the, all these pictures were taken wandering around with my friends because we were just going for a walk I love glazed brick and you can see it as a feature of this photograph here so the wall which has its own interesting composition made up from the bricks the guys who built this wall following obviously the, the whim of the designer with his beautiful geometric construction and use of angular bricks and different things like that but the bottom half of the uh, wall is made with glazed bricks so the normal terracotta bricks have a glaze a ceramic glaze applied to them and it formed a natural uh, horizontal composition in this photograph I just really like it it worked out great I love glazed brick and I was able to bring it into this photograph there is stuff going on in the picture that there's just down to Chan I don't spend a lot of time when I'm out and about composing pictures I often regret that when I come to look at them again when I get the pictures back from the film processor but that is life and that is uh, the, this photograph was taken on when I was walking around with my friends they weren't taking photos we were just hanging out so I had to snap when I could so in the left hand side you can see half a person you can see a bunch of curvy shadows and railings and so on and so forth and in the top left of the corner you can see sort of bluish colours coming from some distant buildings. There are other ways I could have taken this photograph. I could have stood face on, I could have tried to remove all these shadows by standing in a different way. But that isn't what happened on the day. So I'm perfectly happy with that. I and standing and sitting and looking at this picture, I actually I really like the way that the elements in the image have formed this composition. I might easily be standing in front of a canvas one day and want to make something with this type of palette and these curves and these shapes and so on and so forth so to have whipped out the camera in my pocket as we were wandering around on the way to somewhere else and snapped it and caught it as a moment in time in this film really happy with that and um, yeah I'm really happy with that so that concludes my little talk about these three photographs I'd be interested in what you think of this and whether I'm going to pursue it for the next three pictures that I put up. So in the meantime, go out and take photographs, and come back and check out another video.